let's jump into the first story today. Daily Mail, the land with no face masks. Holland's top scientists say there's no solid evidence covering work and warn they could even damage the fight against COVID-19. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty excited about this story. We've got not just uh, so many examples of the snake eating its own tail right now as the exploiters have gone too far in so many ways in their conspiracies. But yeah, we have this major dissenting voice from a credible mainstream government. Oh my gosh. And, you know, the, uh, about the you know, conspiracy theory of this. Uh, th there are a, a number of stories I've been seeing lately that, that really kind of back up my general analysis on how much of a conspiracy is this? Because a lot of people have gone you know, pretty far into some, obviously some extremes about this. And, and my original take that this is a more of a feeding frenzy of fear in which a number of different sub-conspiracies, if you will, or minor conspiracies. I, I don't want to say minor because we're talking about we're talking about banking and all the major U.S. corporations and the mainstream media and government. There's a big conspiracies here, right? But like, it, I I don't I still don't think that there is one singular conspiracy driving this. I don't believe it's it's still possible that at some point. Uh, there were there were a bunch of bankers sitting around going, hey, you know, next time we see people getting a little bit over scared over some silly health threat, you know, like they did with swine flu and bird flu and H1N1, I think those are the same things, all, all, all of that stuff. Yeah, when next time people get a little too scared about, you know, one of these run of the mill viruses, let's let's really blow it up and make a make a global pandemic out of it and and shut down, reboot the economy and. No, I don't think that's the case. I mean, it's possible. Or we're going we're gonna to engineer the virus in a lab in China. And, you know, maybe that may, there's a lot of credibility to those stories about, you know, the virus itself having been manipulated or possibly fabricated. I, you know, I don't, I don't think it's really important. It's another sub-conspiracy, right? The Democrats conspiring to use this against Trump, another sub-conspiracy. Medical facilities. Individual doctors working together to take advantage of federal bonuses of thirty five hundred dollars. You know that's a, a per per corona case that they report in in some instances. It, it's just that much more money for their group. Like yeah, of course they're going to conspire to oh we're fudging the numbers and we're going to hide the fact that we're fudging the numbers or we're all going to work together to excuse each other and say well we erred on the side of being more inclusive and and, and whoops we got a motorcycle death counted because he was you know with covid even though it wasn't of covid whoops we just you know and and i mean even just today i know this is like kind of an unrelated story but i saw this uh on the independent.co.uk the headline is trump will uh, now i i don't want to like misquote them i put it on my instagram i should pull this up because I, 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 and Twitter, I, I, I thought this was really important to, to just to call out. Because what, what the, the headline was just Trump will use emergency powers to remain in White House if he loses election, says House Majority Whip. Now, right away, I mean, I, I have a problem even with that phrasing. Because a lot of people, and we covered this yesterday, like how a lot of people skim headlines. It's why these news outlets write deliberately deceptive headlines. A lot of people skim and don't even read to the sub headline. But like even this phrasing, it doesn't seem responsible to put the attribution last when it's not like a new facts commonly available, you're really just restating someone's opinion or analysis, like an individual's opinion or analysis. They could have said, House Majority Whip says Trump will use emergency powers to remain in White House if he loses election. That would be an honest headline, right? But that's not what they do. And so the sub, the, the sub headline right here is Donald Trump could use emergency powers to extend in term, his term in the White House as senior. And you go, 
Re really? It's not even honest being twisted rhetorically in the order there. I mean, and, and they know that a lot of people don't even just skim the headlines. They skim within the headlines and read like the first few words. And they go, oh, shit. Trump will use emergency powers to remain in the White House if he loses election. You go, wow, we have to stop Trump. And you would Trump derangement syndrome. Like, this is where it comes from. If, if, if you don't know how to decode the mainstream media's bullshit, they are, de they, they, they are deliberately or at least knowingly creating this widespread derangement through sensational, misleading headlines like this. And you go, R really? Really? And, you know, I, I'm i going to go off on a bit of a sidebar in order to bring it back to our Corona block today. I'm a big fan of John Oliver last week tonight. You know, we've watched some of that together, and I'm a fan of his comedy, his sense of humor, his delivery, his, his presentation, his analysis, if not his bad liberal bias. And I think there really is some value to, you know, objectivism and intellectual consistency and in applying the scientific methodology to everything, right? I mean, not like literally to everything, but being aware when you're, when you're analyzing, not to, well, on this thing, I'm just going to go with feels. On this one, I'm going to go with science. Last night, I was watching John Oliver's story from five years ago, making fun of how the mainstream media presents scientific studies and then i go wait a second you've been repeating all of the covid headlines without the same skepticism and analysis maybe john oliver your liberal bias is coloring your ob attempted objective reporting of which there is no such thing anyway so yeah I, hopefully someone will call him out on that and splice together like the clips of him saying don't trust the mainstream media presenting science. Look at the data itself. And then him talking about COVID as if all the mainstream media headlines are, and, and studies that they're based on are, you know, unquestionable facts of science. So the story back to the Daily Mail from Amsterdam. As I walked around the sun-dappled streets of Amsterdam, something felt strange in this world, swept by fear and pandemic. There was laughter coming from barges Sliding along the famous canals, clusters of cyclists clogged the streets, shoplifters dipped into chic boutiques, the barbershop seemed busy, and cafes served couples chatting over coffee. I don't ever want to hear an American making fun of Europe again. Like, really? No, okay, I'll do it myself, because I'll keep making fun of Europe all the ways that I, yeah, the the rebellious, free-spirited ones left Europe and went to the United States and all the slavish ones stayed in, well, in Germany, they're protesting with more people against coronavirus lockdowns than we even have with the protests for George Floyd here. Yeah. It's fun to make fun of old world stereotypes. But really, like, look, look, look at the contrast. Wh where in America is that? Is that a thing? Where in America do we just have pleasant, normal, bustling neighborhoods right now? Like, we don't. It's not a thing. And I mean, we 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 talk. I, I I know we've kind of like gone over and over our personal experiences with masks, Jim. But like, no, this this is not normal. There's and even just the mask mandates, semi mandates, whatever you want to call them, state of emergency orders. They know what they're doing, and it's not just denying us Americans a semblance of normal life, but actually depressing human activity so they can control it more and profit from it. Like, they know, they know. You can't be relaxed in public right now in America. I mean, I, I, I shouldn't say that. That's that's 
too much of a blanket statement. There are a lot of great places in Arizona in rural communities where people are just like, I don't buy this crap. And masks aren't a thing. But even then, you got to walk in like, huh, is anybody wear a mask? Today? Oh, everybody's cool in here? Okay, all right, cool. Now I can relax. Sort of. But I still can't serve you alcohol without food, without getting arrested, or whatever the current rate. I mean, that was New York that changed, that actually made that their bar enforcement policy. I heard many voices of tourists in bars and restaurants. Well, even the seedier sides of this celebrated Dutch city of people scrolling through them. It took me a moment to realize what was so weird. Then it struck me. It felt like I had stepped back in time. Returning to the pre-pandemic normality of a bustling city with human beings whose faces were not covered by cloth. <clears throat> For 120 countries in the world, including much of Europe, have or while 120 countries have ordered citizens to wear masks in public places to prevent the spread of COVID-19, the Dutch are doing things differently. The nation's top scientists, having examined key data and research, have declared there is no firm evidence to back the use of face covering. Indeed, they argue that wearing the wretched things may actually Hamper the fight against disease. According to Cohen Barron's spokesman for the National Institute for Public Health and the Environment, face masks in public places are not necessary based on all the current evidence. There is no benefit and there may even be negative impact. This is a bold but highly controversial stance. And you go, um, uh, why? Why is... Really? Listening to the science unperverted by politics, that's now bold and controversial. It just shows how far the world has fallen. Like, and, and you know, in a couple of ways, I want to think that the governments are laughing at us as libertarians going, <laughs> You thought people still cared about freedom? Really? <laughs> oh no, look, check this out. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna turn everybody into zombies. And not only that. We're going to make them bully you into being a zombie, too. You're going to wear a mask. And I like, I'm like, shit, I have. I've worn a mask a few times. Never proactively. Never, you know. But, god damn. And then the Dutch are sitting there like, no, we're, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to listen to the science on this one. And, uh, you know, science. Makes life better, not worse. Yeah, you know, just getting getting rid of your your delusions, your propaganda, your wishful thinking, your logical fallacies, and using logic and reason and evidence and science. Woo! -hoo! You get to be happier, healthier. Everything's better across the board with truth rather than with lies. Don't tell me sweet little lies if it means that. The rich get richer and the poor get poorer as a result, and we all end up miserable. No, it's just, no, no. Yes, you can get sweet lies, and denial might give you a temporary res respite from the mental anguish of your own contradictions, but it is not a sustainable path. Now, all right. Last week, Downing Street joined the global stampede to enforce face masks in public spaces such as shops, supermarkets, and stations following Scotland, Spain, and France, along with Holland's neighboring nations of Belgium and Germany. Now, for those of you who don't know, Downing Street is where the prime minister resides and works. So they're saying the, the head of British government when they say Downing Street. As Boris Johnson said, we think masks have a great deal of value, scientific evaluation of face coverings and their importance in stopping Aerosol droplets has been growing. People should wear them in shops. And you go, well, wait. But politicians are still exempt, right? We saw that in, in, in D.C. In the regulations for D.C., they're saying they're actually saying politicians and government officials are exempt. That's actually a common thread around the world and in the United States when it comes to uh, even state regulations or state state of emergencies governors with their own uh regulations so that the story goes on but the dutch disagree to the delight of all the citizens i spoke with in amsterdam 
I hate wearing them, said Aicha uh, Metziati, 29, in the hip fashion store of Das Workhouse. They are horrible. People look like they have nappies on their faces. <laughs> Slave muzzles. Margarita, 24-year-old sales assistant in a pop of drink shops, said it was hard to read people's facial expressions when they wore masks. You make contact with people better without them, and it's easier to talk to them in the store. I mean, I, I could keep going. There's like there's, there's this whole great article about, yeah, yeah, it's not necessary, and it's better without them. So skipping ahead to the end of the article, the one family I found wandering along the canals clad in face masks turned out to be holiday Italians near Milan. We have been wearing them all the time for five months, so they don't feel uncomfortable anymore, said Michele Mueller. He added that they have been, uh, they had been uh, astonished when they arrived in Holland. We drove through Switzerland, where everyone has a mask, and in Germany, where it is also mandatory. Then we crossed the border, and suddenly, no one was wearing them. And we turned around and ran in fright and fear because we were going to die. And there were bodies left and right all over the streets, and morgues overflowing with dead Dutch. And no, no. Later, I came across a British accent belonging to a scientist who had just moved from Milton Keynes to a new job in the city. But it feels very different from the UK, said Jenny White. It feels much more normal here. You can almost forget about the disease. And that's what we should do. When someone fools you and you realize that you've been fooled, you don't dwell on the fa false fear specter. But that doesn't stop the government of Houston, Texas, our next story from insider.com. Houston wants police to find people $250 for not wearing masks. As the coronavirus ravages the city, the Houston police chief is urging people to wear a mask for the greater good. Houston Mayor Sylvester Turner on Monday ordered police to issue citations to people who fail to wear masks in public. If you ignore the citation, it's a $250 fine. Turner wants to reduce the city's high coronavirus positive rate to 5% by the end of August. Well, hey, how about you get rid of those test companies that are giving you 30% false positives? I don't know, just a suggestion. Houston Police Chief Art Acevedo said people should wear masks for the greater good. Now, if, here's the thing. If they cared about public health, we wouldn't have an obesity epidemic, an opioid epidemic, a prescription side effect epidemic. We wouldn't have cannabis still largely illegal in most places and definitely, you know, illegal in terms of being able to develop and, and, and use it to its full extent medicinally, obviously, or to benefit human health. Why, why does government care about this? Oh, 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 we, this is the health risk that gives us an excuse to steal from you for not complying with our silly symbolic compliance edict. Now they care. And they're going to turn, and then this distorts the whole conversation. So the whole propaganda apparatus that they can, you know, uh, sway to this is uh, just going to, going to, going to pollute the conversation. So the next, and you think, you think this is crazy. Like, oh, Adam, it's just, it's just where, I'm, no, it's not. When they, like if, 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 and honestly, if everything around mask wearing was voluntary and, oh, and, and not subject to censorship, which, you know, of course, we're going to talk about with Ben Swan, who's been censored with his story, just mentioning, hey, there are these three scientific studies that show that masks don't help. He didn't say don't wear a mask ever. He didn't even, I mean, we're going to get into this more. I say don't ever wear a mask proactively. If you can avoid people who are scared enough to say you have to wear this, if you, if you really want to go visit someone in their home and they're scared and you want to be polite, you know, wear a mask. But there are real consequences attached to this, and it's not just $250 fine. It's lives ruined, and I don't mean the suicides that are now outpacing COVID everywhere that we've seen the data for that. I don't just mean the negative health consequences of wearing a mask and the rebreathing and the moist environment and the breeding ground for viruses and bacteria and touching your face more and making it more likely that you're going to get a virus if you're out 
you're touching your face more while you're touching other surfaces that other people. I mean, just do we really? Yeah, unfortunately, we really have to explain this and and, and provide this counter propaganda perspective right now so heavily because our next story from the Sun deck out Las Vegas gambler removed from famous four Queens casino in handcuffs after he went in without wearing a mask. I think this website might be getting sponsorship from the four Queens casino because four Queens is not a, a famous of, of all, of all the casinos in Vegas. Not really. I, I put in the category of less famous than the average casino in Vegas, but Hey, maybe that's uh maybe that's them just, yeah, maybe, maybe this whole thing is set up for them to get attention, but CJ, thank you. You've got the video playing there. And this is disgusting. Now, it looks like this is private security. Now, the story here, I'll read while the video plays, the Las Vegas gambler was removed from the famous Four Queens Casino in handcuffs after he went in without wearing a mask. The man was bundled out of the building and handed over to cops for flouting public safety rules on Saturday night. So they don't, they don't really, you know, I, from this video, I'm pretty sure all these guys are, are, are armed casino security wearing masks. And it doesn't really explain what happened before the video started, right? But flouting public safety rules. You know, and, and I don't even want to, you know, cast aspersions on this individual. You know, maybe he was, uh, you know, licking licking food at the buffet. I, you know, we're licking the plates. You know, all right. Okay. Yeah. Get that asshole out of there. Fine. Um, and, and that may, may it, it seems like a more logical explanation, but even now, like the, the headline says after he went in without wearing a mask. I'm not taking the journalism at its word here, but this video by itself is disturbing. You look at even the thumbnail from this on the story, and you can see in the background, like not even the background, just off to the right. There's a couple walking into the casino wearing masks. Dude's got his nose out, and the lady's got it around her chin. And it gets better. <clears throat> if you watch the video or just, just look at the thumbnail on the story, you can look through the glass door into the casino, and you see a woman smoking a cigarette with her mask around her neck. And you go, well, we have to let people take their masks off when they're eating or drinking or smoking, of course, because we allow smoking inside in casinos in Las Vegas and well, most of them, right? I don't know. So they all have smoke inside. Whatever. You go. But it gets better. It, but wait, there's more. You can see in the video the bystanders going after this guy to record and to protect him, right? From the security are have their masks down. And, and you're like, why are they not turning around? And it's, it's, it's not, and I, I wonder like, what, what is the, the, the selective enforcement here? Cause he, could he, so you can, if you walk in and you wear a mask on your chin, that's cool. We're not going to bother you. But if you come in and have no mask and say, I don't need a mask. I'm good. And you know what? This was my experience. The one really negative experience that I've personally had with masks was at the Sprouts this weekend, grocery store, where I was asked to leave. And I'll bet if I had walked in and just pretended to wear a mask, they would have been they, they wouldn't have said anything. I have because now just think about this for a second. We have heard lots of stories, and there's all sorts of viral videos. This is just one dumb example. And, and and private security, you're like Adam, it's private security. Yeah, I, yeah, but it's because of government mandates with a major corporation that has government sponsorship. Special, how many special licenses do you need to run a casino in Vegas, right? And they, what happened? They handed him over to cops. It's all. And if they had kicked him out, like, yeah, I'd say, all right, man, not as big a deal. Well, they handed him over to cops for flouting public safety rules. Everybody in that video, except this, and even the security guards. Hello, six feet. Everybody is flouting public safety rules. So to the next story, 
Wall Street Journal, FDA's shifting standards for Chinese face masks fuel confusion. And I don't want to get too much into the masks and distribution issue here so much as the fueling confusion. Because it's deliberate. And, and just about the deliberate thing and the conspiracy thing, I'm really confident in my analysis that this is a cluster of conspiracies working together to get us to where we are today with coronaphobia. And one of the reasons I'm, I'm confident in that, even in just the undeniable obvious facts that we know, like we know that there are existing power structures based on people conspiring, right? The Republicans and Democrats, even though they're the left and right wing of the American Socialist Party, in effect, they are they conspire politically to maintain the duopoly, to maintain their roles in it, to maintain that power. We know that the Federal Reserve manipulates the currency, manipulates interest rates, manipulates the media. Cons it's people conspiring to maintain that power of the banking system, right? We know that these conspiracies exist. We know that within the banking system, there's a super class of, you know, the, uh, the few those the few thousand richest people in the world. And maybe there maybe it's not global. Like I'm willing to say, like maybe the there's, again, probably not a singular widespread global conspiracy because it would be better organized. But. There are so many critical things happening as part of the racket and exploitation happening around coronaphobia that you go, that's not happening without their permission. Right? That's the important thing to keep in mind. It's it, You don't see the banking class standing up to the government and the media saying, hey guys, you really should slow your roll with this whole corona thing because... It's bad for people. No, they're just going, oh, this is good for our bottom line. Keep it going. Keep it up. Even that, you know, constitutes conspiring. And again, is it is it's not there's there is not a singular conspiracy, but a cluster of conspiracies all operating around the coronaphobia pandemic. So this thing about the masks. When this hit. I was offered the chance to import masks myself directly. I know you go, Adam, you're an importer. What, what are you talking about? Yeah, my book, Freedom. Do I have my studio copy here in my box? I do, yes. This book, Freedom, which, by the way, costs 40 cents to print. Oh, well, this version, this was the book bomb edition, special edition with the postage on the back and, and all the sponsorship stuff and local Libertarian Party stuff. Uh, this was 29 cents. Printed and shipped from China. You can't do that in the United States. So the company that that printed and and uh, sent and, and, and arranged for the shipping on this for me, they also uh, offered. They were like, "Hey, I, I we get it. You're probably not doing book tours right now, but you want to make money doing masks. We can send you these masks in bulk, and we can custom print them." And for a while, I mean, I was so I felt for it. Enough that I was like, oh, yeah, let's get masks. Let's get the Freedom logo on a mask. Won't that be cool? You can have a slave puzzle. It says Freedom on it. And then I was like, well, let's have smart-ass comments on them, believing that they were doing this under duress. Like, this is not Freedom. Like, that would be a better thing. If you're gonna print and then I'm like, no, I don't even want to contribute to that at all. I, I would be then profiteering off the panic itself, myself. Like, no, do I want? No. But. In the scramble for personal protective equipment, what was the biggest impediment? Government. A Food and Drug Administration effort to address a shortage of protective masks has instead opened the floodgates to 3,500 Chinese manufacturers selling product of widely varying quality, potentially putting the public at risk and leaving some U.S. states with stockpiles of masks they no longer trust as protective gear. A Wall Street Journal analysis found. I'm just like, ah, really? The sensationalism, this, you know, I mean, one of the stores I went to with Sam over the weekend, and was, I, mean, I go shopping for women's clothing with my wife. I know it's one of those husbandly duties. And we, we were laughing at this mask we saw at the store. 
they, they didn't have requirements for customers. It was really nice. And, you know, we got to have a friendly conversation with the staff like, hey, this sorry you have to deal with this. You know, but they're like, yeah, we just we don't care. We don't want to enforce anything and you know, let people shop here. We're fine. We don't feel unsafe. But they were selling a mask and it was made in Mexico, by the way. So like the FDA, they, they, they want you to be scared about this thing from China. China, be a, feel sorry for Mexico. Be afraid of China. That, that, I mean, there's a subtext to all these headlines. You think I'm joking? Well, hold on. We got another one here. With, with Mexico, the mask made in Mexico on the back, in order to be sold in the U.S., has to have this disclaimer that basically says, this mask is useless, won't stop COVID. Or any other infectious diseases. As this, and you go, this is a fraud against people who just don't read labels. Who don't read sub headlines. <laughs> so I mean, so I, skipping ahead for you a second, CJ here. I got to tie this in. Jim, do you know what I'm talking about? Was it the, the latest random, just random, off-the-wall, fear-mongering headline from China? Did you catch this one? USDA identifies some of mysterious seeds sent to U.S. from China. I almost covered the story last week when it first came on. I was like, uh, this sounds just like a weird, stupid, oh, people are afraid of China quirky story. But I, it, and, and you know what? I wish I had, because I would have gotten another told you so out of this. Because what would I have said? Well, I've ordered seeds from China for gardening, for homes, and some of them I've gotten off Wish. And products from Wish come in cheap packages. Sometimes the labeling sucks. The translations are wrong. <laughs> and you go, okay, I got random seeds. But to someone who doesn't know that, like, People sending seeds all over the world at any time. This is like, that's normal. You know, they, they put out the headline, mysterious seeds arriving from China. <gasps> are they, are they bioengineered? Are they going to, oh, are they going to kill everything? Are they going to, are they going to grow monster military engineered carnivorous plants that are going to come and eat all of us? The, the Chinese mystery seeds are here. You know, no, like this is a thing. Like I, I have ordered seeds from China, maybe half a dozen times. Through it, I'm scrolling on Wish and I see some cool, crazy cactus plant. I guess send me the seeds for that for a dollar. What did I order? What it was? It's just like this weird. I'm like, do I have it? I probably no. I threw them all out. I was like, I've got like this, this weird really little padded envelope with a little, like you know, dime bag baggy inside with some seeds in it and. A, and you go, did I order this? I, I gotta like look up. Oh, it's the cactus seed. Okay. If I had put the wrong address on it and went to, oh my gosh, they're sending mystery. And like right away, you think about this conspiracy and you go, if China wanted to do that, they wouldn't be sending seeds in the mail. Are you fucking kidding me? Like, you just, have some spy go sprinkle them in parks and they'll actually get planted, you know, or I, I mean, there's just like, it's drop them from the sky. I guess it's just, we're going to hope that Americans plant rant. I, I'm so lazy. I haven't gotten around to planting any of the cactus seeds I've ordered from wish. Like you're, you're really going to count on Americans planting seeds and growing crops from random. And no, posted. no. So I was proven right. CJ, can you roll tape on this CBS Boston article video? Because you, you, you might, the audience might think I'm exaggerating, like how this is being presented. CJ, I saw you got that article up. Thank you for finding that. You got the video from it. Because it shows you. And I saw this. I was like, yep. Again, with more. Anna? <sighs> Kate, this was the first weekend for the new travel restrictions for people coming into Massachusetts. Many travelers. That's the next video on the autoplay there, CJ. You got to go back to the first one on that page. I refresh the page. 
aid sent from China to the U.S. They apparently include mustard, cabbage, and morning glory. There's also some herbs like mint, sage, rosemary, lavender, hibiscus. For weeks, people in the U.S., Canada, and the U.K. have been receiving seeds in the mail. All 50 states are still warning people who receive them to not plant them. <laughs> ah, oh, oh, my brain hurts from the stupidity of this. Like, really? Now, uh, right away, for weeks. There's travel restrictions in effect there's, there's, for students in return. CJ, you got that video playing now. The other video is on autoplay, so. Wait. For weeks, people in the U.S., Canada, and U.K. have been receiving seeds in the mail. No. No, 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 no. For decades, people in the U.S., Canada, and United Kingdom have been receiving seeds in the mail. For weeks, people have been unnecessarily paranoid about China. And the government has been all too eager to feed into that. And to the extent that all, like, this became a thing. I don't know if people are really this paranoid and, and hyper-reactive or if it's just government making it seem that way. Please don't watch CBS Boston ever again if you do now. Please stop. If you're, if you're a watcher of CBS or any kind of these regular news, stop. Please, please, please stop. You're making yourself dumber. You're making America dumber. You're making it easy for government to take power that they're going to use against all of us, including me. And I get it. Right? I mean, if you're a skimmer of headlines and you go, COVID kills millions, must wear masks to be safe. People who don't wear masks are killing your grandma. And you go to Walmart, yeah, you're going to freak out. I don't have disdain as much as pity for those people we see in these viral videos now of people at Walmart getting uh, assaulted even, actually physically assaulted for not wearing masks. So just just a, a couple more headlines. I, I got to round out this Corona block today. From ZeroHedge.com, red flag soars Big Pharma will be exempt from COVID-19 vaccine liability claims. Not surprising, still disturbing, if I may just translate what this means. This is like a government official saying, you know, this health threat is so serious that we want to make sure people can give you medicine. And even if they poison you by accident, you can't sue them. Yeah. Yeah. And while doctors and journalists are being censored left and right, eugenicist Bill Gates is being promoted as the definitive authority on all things pandemic. Now, where is this going? Our last headline today on this, although there are so many other stories we need to get to about homelessness as a result of this, the economic impacts, businesses closing, big businesses closing. Chains going out of business. But one story I, I just have to include here to round out this block. Teachers protest across U.S. over reopening schools in pandemic. Teachers and support staff at more than 35 school districts ac across the United States on Monday are protesting the reopening of schools while COVID-19 is surging in many parts of the country. They are demanding in-person classes not be held until scientific data supports it. Safety protocols such as lower class size and virus testing are established, and schools are staffed with adequate numbers of counselors and nurses, nurses according to a website set up for the demonstrations. This is not science. This is bias. Where the hell were these teachers demanding that scientific data support shutdowns? Big silver lining I'll remind people of. There's an awakening happening. There's a splitting, but there's an awakening happening. More than ever, people are going, oh, let's homeschool. And I, I love teachers, and I love people who get into the teaching profession for right for the right reasons and, 
and serve in government schools out of naivete or lack of options. But as a whole, teachers in America have become uh, an embarrassment. And this is just one more example. If someone says, I'm willing to work for government and propagandize your child, you should not trust them with your child's education. And I just think back about like, oh, why, why are, this is just how much work we have to do as libertarians. People not thinking for themselves, people trusting authority. And, and maybe it's just forgetting history. And, and, and to, the, to the liberals especially, but to everybody really, I would say, do you not remember what government and all of its lackey scientists and doctors told us about cannabis and how dangerous it was for every single user and for public health? Why do you still trust them? And I promise when we come back after this interview, we'll, we'll get to some of those. We'll, we'll get to the pedophiles. We'll get to the homelessness. We'll get to the economic analysis.